Right then, here we go, part two. Now this is dried, it's okay. Uh, this is where I start to pull out the bits that I like and um, get rid of the bits I don't like. Basically, you, you tweak it until it looks how you want it to look. Now you can see in between, I've actually topped up my colours here because I've got um, tube colours that I use to top up because you get through certain colours a lot. <laughs> so, just thought I'd mention that. So, this is now dry. So this is what's called glazing. And this is where you have a dry layer and you, you can then add other transparent layers of colour over the top. And you can do as many of these as you want to do. Glazing is, is basically about, you You know, once I've got this layer on, I'm going on with this sort of yellowy blue colour. Uh, sorry, just yellowy, mostly just yellow, actually. Bright green colour. And it particularly works very well with leaves because you get hundreds of leaves with the light shining through them and they, you know, depending on where the leaves are overlapping each other. You get very light yellow bits, you get very greeny bits, you get very dark blue bits, all in the whole range. So you pick up a leaf and you look at a leaf and you think, oh, it's green. Well, it isn't. It's got a lot of other colours depending on where it is in relation to other leaves. So what I'm trying to say here, so I'm doing the same thing as I was doing before, only still lots of dots and dashes. But it's now going over a layer of green which is already dry. Now I'm starting off with, generally you start off with the the lighter colours first. Dots and dashes you see. As usual I'm still rushing it but you won't have to. <laughs> Dots and dashes. I'm sort of, see where I last time I sort of left gaps where the twigs are going to be. Kind of add a bit more to them. So it starts to look more like leaves. And again, as I did before, here and there, particularly at the end of where you would have leaves, you spend a bit more time. I'm not going to, but you are, if you do this. <laughs> spend a bit more time just doing these little leaves. At the end of a branch of a tree, you get the smaller leaves because they're the little, they're the new ones coming out. So you have little, you kind of, they, they taper off. You're doing the edge of a, edge of a branch, the, the leaves taper off. So they're smaller there and then they're bigger here, the more chunky here. So you just press harder. Everybody's got a different way of holding a brush and brush control comes into this, but how do you develop that? Yeah, you develop it by doing it. That was a bit brighter than I thought. Oh, that's rather good though. That's fine. Anyway, I uh, just need to do a little bit over here. Now, trees, the tree's going to be going off the top of the picture. Trees are, you quite often see when people try and paint trees, they try and fit them in the page, but they never do because, well, trees are massive. <laughs> so now I've done the yellowy greens. Sorry, I got that to come out. Bugger it. Anyway done the yellowy green so I want to go up to slightly darker greens now so let's get my viridian out there we go there's my lovely viridian green but I want to put a bit of dark blue in is it that one nope it's that one I think okay so it's that one okay so I've got a viridian green I've got a dark blue and this will be, you see where there's several leaves together and the sun's shining through, you're going to get a much darker green. And again, try and do, you know, to some degree this is wet, which is great. Because you will get a full range of different greens in a tree, when the sun's out. But to some degree you get it at any time. So let's have that go off the top there. It's going off the top there, as I said. Let's mix up a lot more. Uh, where was it that one? I think so. Ooh. Okay. Oh, that'll do. Oh, yes, that's nice and dark. That's a different green. I think that's called a hooker's green, and I don't know why it's called that. <laughs> but I like to try and imagine. 
Okay. So now my tree is getting a little bit of substance to it. Again, you won't overdo it because if you do it, it'll all end up the same shade of green and you'll be really annoyed with yourself because there's nothing you can do once you've lost the white. Um, <laughs> you've, you've lost it. So that's what I say. You're going to do this carefully. I'm doing it slapdash because I've done it before and I have a vague idea of what I'm doing already. Although it may not work. Sometimes they don't. You see? Range. The range of green. And I've got this now idea that this tree is sort of hovering over this scene. So I can come back to that. I would like to, you know, if I wasn't actually doing this as a demonstration, I would be spending more time doing these little bits of, you know, little tree, little bits coming out here, which you're going to have time to do. Okay. Now, same applies now to the bluebells. I've got a lovely purple there. Let's get another purple. I've topped up the cerulean because I needed more of that. Good. Cerulean and purple. Now I'm going to same thing's going to happen here. You know, I don't know if you noticed, but when watercolors dry, they dry a lot duller, which can be quite annoying because you think, oh, that's great. And then it dries and you think, ugh, that's not so good. But it gives you the opportunity to add a bit more vibrant colour here and there. Now, if you can imagine this is woodland, there's going to be shadows here and there. There's going to be light bits and dark bits, depending on where the sun is. I'm not going to worry about exactly where they are. Because once you're in, you know, once you're under trees, you don't really know. So there's no point worrying about it. But I want to just give it a bit more of a clout here. Let's perhaps there's a bit more shadow behind this tree here, maybe. So a little bit darker. So it's the same basic techniques, dots and dashes. Don't overdo it. There's that lovely colour again. Yeah. As I said, um, you're going to do yours more carefully. I'm not going to. I'm just trying to do a. I'm just you're just trying to show you the. You know how to go about it. Everybody's going to end up with something completely different because it's such a random thing, watercolour, but. Um, and please don't try and make yours look like this because it's impossible. I can't make mine look like this. If I did it again, it wouldn't be like this. <laughs> it's a random medium, unfortunately. That's what it does. Uh, now, over there, I thought I'd just put the field in a bit more. There's my field that I kind of want the... You see, basically what I'm doing, I've got a layer of paint on from the first attack. And then now I'm... Let's put a few hint of it in between here look and now I'm uh, going over and sort of picking out certain details so I've got a bit slightly more convincing idea of a field behind there now uh, let's take some of the leaves behind there as well but this is just one you know this is this the second layer what I'm doing here is the second attack you can actually keep going um, these are fantastic what is his name Arthur was it Arthur Rands I can't remember um, Oh, God. Anyway, famous watercolour artist. They quite often will build up lots and lots of layers of glazes, like 20 or 30 different glazes. And it basically means you've got to let the paint dry very, very thoroughly in between each attack. Um, I call it attack. That's because I'm attacking it, but you don't have to. Uh, so this is just, you know, one layer. But if you can keep layering and you can have lots of fun playing with adding in different layers so let's see, to bring that down there again so and then I don't know if you saw how quickly I did that and I've sort of watered it down a lot but let's have a kind of a, a hint of maybe there's some tree trunks in these trees behind these are supposed to be you know I'm just thinking about trees across a field and all you need to do is, is get a sort of there you go. So you got got you got any kind of an impression there of tree trunks, but not too much. I don't want to overdo it. Okay, now uh, so what did I want to do? Oh yes, okay. I want bright yellow again and the green that came out of the box and I can't get it back in there. I actually kind of want to have a few light greens here, a bit more here. 
just to kind of because you again the same thing as you get with the bluebells where the sun shines you get a more pinky color uh on the on the leaves on the what do you call these things stems <laughs> you can, where where the sun hits some of the stems you're going to get a lighter green same as with these same as with these uh, actually i'm just looking at that hmm. whilst that's still wet oh, yeah. okay purple purple and blue bit of green i'm just realizing i actually want a few more darker bits there there we go But as I say, this is a sort of uh, you just gonna it's, you just keep fiddling with it until it looks like something you like, and if that doesn't happen, you can bin it and have another go, or go and play with the dog, whatever. There we go. So this is building up a little bit now. Uh, let me see. Oh yes. Yeah, so then, really, I need to do more on the tree trunk. So I've gone back to my sort of terracotta colour here. Let's add in a little bit of purple. Okay, so happens to be quite a nice colour. So I'm actually putting in, as I was before, a few sort of a bit more idea of twigs. Actually, I'm going to go down to a slightly smaller brush so that I can get it. Uh, so I'm going between the clumps, not over the top or whatever because if you go over the top it does look very you know if I go over the top that just doesn't look right go between the clumps and you don't have to take them out to the edge where the leaves are so you know, I'm actually adding in more water towards the edges anyway let's have some of those go off there and I'm doing the same thing again I'm actually using a smaller brush and just using the very tip to get get the idea of little twigs coming down here and I can add some more leaves on the top of some of these little twigs if I want to some here going across here okay now let's get the darker color again the darker uh, what is it? Blue, Ooh. blue, purple, and uh, I think this is called Indian red. But anyway, no, nice, nice, vibrant. It's not vibrant enough. More vibrant. Where is it? There we go. That's what I wanted. And uh, so I'm actually going to try and be a little bit more careful than I have been to pick out some of the let's have some of that, and that gives the idea of the tree trunk perhaps going off down there behind some of these stems dots and dashes trunk tree trunk um, texture of bark dots and dashes you see then I haven't got a faff around trying to tell you what tree it is so I haven't got a clue because I'm making it up but I have got a sort of suggestion of tree so let's put a few more in between there so again you can get away with this because you've got the sun shining on a tree you've got bits that sort of are a different color just because of where the sun is hitting them okay all right uh okay so anything else urgent i think it's almost there it's as good as it can be i mean it's Let's have a look. I'm looking at it through the camera itself to see if there's anything else I desperately need to do. You know what? No, I can I can fiddle around. Oh no, no, I've just seen something. <laughs> I want a gap between the trees there. Look, the trees I wanted in the background there. Okay, so now they're being seen behind that tree, a bit there. Yeah, good. That's all right there then. It goes down there. That's it. Have a go if you want to. It's a sketch, but it captures a moment. And that's what's nice with watercolour. It'll capture a little moment. And um, 
you never know you might end up with something fantastic okay bye